Hey, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to continue talking about comparing fractions. So our learning goal for today says, I can compare unit fractions using different size models representing the whole. So the materials that you need for this one are just a dry erase board. All right, so one is the same as one. Do you agree with that? Yes or no? Yeah, I would say what? Yeah, one is the same as one. So yes, I agree with that. Is one the same as one in this example if I'm comparing one can of soda to one liter of soda? Is one still the same as one? Yes or no? No, right? How does this change your thinking about one is the same as one? The whole and how much is in it matters. This is true when we're comparing fractions. So for breakfast this morning, my brother and I each had a glass of juice. Okay, so here's my glass and here's my brother's glass. What fraction of my glass has juice? So just my glass. Yeah, it's in four equal parts, one fourth. What fraction of my brother's glass has juice? Two equal parts, only one half. So when wholes are the same, one half is greater than one fourth. Does this picture prove that? Nope. We have to consider the whole when we're comparing fractions. So because these are different size wholes, if you were to take these different amounts, this one fourth in my glass and one half in my brother's glass, if you were to pour them into another container, they could end up being the same amount because the size of the whole can be misleading. So let's see how comparisons change when our holes are the same. So draw two rectangles that are the same size and partition each into thirds. So I want you to draw them on top of each other just like this. Then you're going to partition them into thirds. And then you're going to, um, so pause, do that, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. Okay, so take those two rectangles and split them into thirds. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so this one's now in one thirds and this one is now in thirds. So now partition the first rectangle into sixths. So remember the way that you can do that is you have thirds, just split each one of the thirds in half again and you'll have sixths. Okay, so pause the video, do that only to the first rectangle, leave the second rectangle alone and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. So here is my first rectangle into sixths. So shade the unit fraction in each rectangle. So pause the video, shade the unit fraction. Remember the unit fraction is how many parts of it? Yeah, just one. Okay, so pause the video, shade one unit fraction in each rectangle, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends. Here is one unit or one fraction in each unit shaded. Label your models and use the words greater than or less than to compare. So write each fraction or each model in uh, fractional fraction form and then compare them using greater than or less than. So pause the video and you're going to be writing it out. So you would say, let's say for example with this one, I'm not going to actually use this one. I could say one eighth is less than one half. Okay, you would write that out on your board. So do that using these examples with one sixth and one third. So pause the video, do that, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends. So I came up with one sixth is less than one third. Did you guys come up with that too? Yeah, because even though there's more parts, the more parts you have, the smaller each part will be. 
Okay, so one sixth is less than one third. Just because the six is larger doesn't mean you're going to get a larger part. All right, so when comparing fractions, remember the following. The size of the whole should be the same for our lessons. If comparing a unit fraction, the larger the total number of parts, the smaller each part will be. So with that being said, if comparing unit fraction, the smaller the total number of parts, the larger each part will be. So it's kind of almost like the opposite of what we've always been thinking, right? So larger numbers mean more. But in fractions, when you are splitting up and you have unit fractions, the larger the number means the smaller each part will be, okay? All right, so nice job, friends, comparing unit fractions. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.